the Lacey V Crochet Stitch has a surprising special ability that I think most of you are going to absolutely love. The Lacey V Crochet Stitch is beautiful. There's a lot of depth and dimension in this stitch. It is so much fun to work up. We don't have to worry about counting our stitches in the rows because the way the pattern is designed. Just by accomplishing the pattern, you accomplish all of the stitches required for that row. So big win there for anyone who does not like counting their stitches in every row. Now it is a four row repeat, so we are going to have to learn everything that we have to do in all four rows. But what's great is because each row is so different, all you have to do is refer to the row below to know what you need to do next. So you don't even really have to count what row you are on to know what to do, because all you have to do is look at the row below and know, oh, this is what's next, this is what's next, and it's awesome. So I really appreciate that pattern for that reason as well. This pattern is actually a pattern I've been looking for for a very long time. I will share with you why at the end of the video and it'll make a lot of sense what you can do special with this pattern that is really, really neat. Okay, so when it comes to this pattern, the Lacey V Crochet Stitch, the crochet level, I'm gonna say it is, is an advanced beginner crocheter level. We're working basic stitches, just double crochets, single crochets and chains, that's really it. And even the way we are arranging those stitches, it's pretty easy to pick up. So I think this is gonna be a fun one for most people because like I said, working those basic stitches, once you have the pattern down, you don't have to count your stitches, don't have to count your rows, and you just can really immerse yourself into the project and just go without thinking, which a lot of us appreciate for that relaxing meditative project. The terminology I am using for this pattern is US terminology. So whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, I'm using US terms. The multiple stitch count requirement for the Lacey V Crochet Stitch is a multiple of three plus two. And when I'm working up the swatch, I will overemphasize how to work up a multiple stitch count requirement for those of you who still struggle with that. So you'll get it. You'll understand what that means and how to accomplish whatever it is that you wanna make with this pattern. So excited. Okay, the materials I'm gonna use for this demonstration, they're just basic materials so I can show you how to do the stitch, but if you really wanna know what I am using, a size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. This is loops and threads impeccable yarn. I believe the color is linen, though I may be wrong, but it's loops and threads impeccable yarn. The crochet hook I'm gonna be using is the H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. A yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in those ends at the end of your project, whatever it is that you are making. And a pair of scissors, have on hand. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Like I said, I'm going to just make a small swatch example. So that way I can show you what to do, how to get through each row, what to expect and then you can take what I show you and manipulate the number of stitches to create whatever it is that you wanna create with this pattern. So starting with a, ta a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Go ahead and create your slip knot. Attach your crochet hook. We are ready to begin. So it's a multiple of three plus two. And again, I'm going to be just making a small swatch example. So multiple of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So multiple of three, got that covered. So I have a total of 12 stitches here and then plus two, one, two. So basically do the multiple of three until you have met the dimension, the width dimension of whatever it is that you want to make, and then add two. Here it goes, so I have 12, 13, 14 stitches in my little example here. 
For row one, we are going to make one double crochet stitch in the fifth chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V-stitches, one, two, three, four, five, double crochet. That skipped four chains counts as our first double crochet stitch plus chain one, so that this is technically our first V-stitch. Skip two chains, one, two, in that third chain, make a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two stitches, one, two, in that third stitch, Make a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that's the repeat pattern for row one. You're just gonna skip two chains, skip two stitches, and in the next stitch space, make that double crochet, chain one, double crochet. In the very last chain, of row one, you will make your last V-stitch or double crochet, chain one, double crochet, even in that very last stitch space. That's how we will end row one. Let's move on to row two. So for row two, we will start by chaining three. One, two, three. Turn our work. That chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. To begin row two, we will make two double crochet stitches inside that first chain one space. One, two, perfect. And for the rest of row two, all we are doing is making three double crochet stitches in the chain one space. So literally just locate where's the next chain one. It's not between the V stitches here where there's a two stitch variation from the foundation row. Look for the V stitches with the chain ones and make three double crochets. One. two, three. Skip over, find that V-stitch, find the chain one, make three double crochet stitches. If you do not pay attention to this and you just go ahead and continue making three double crochet stitches between all of the double crochet stitches, let me show you what it'll look like setting this down. So here is row two where we are just making the three double crochet stitches in the chain one space. This is the correct way. This is what we want. Here is what it looks like when you just make three double crochet stitches between like every double crochet stitch. It looks more crowded and it honestly just looks like it's one double crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way across and we don't want that. That's not going to create the pattern that we want. We want there to be a space right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and back it up. And do what I'm supposed to do and make three double crochet stitches in the chain one space. Now at the very end of row two, you'll see that we have that chain four turning chain that we had in the very beginning. We're just gonna make all three of our double crochet stitches in this giant space at the very end of the row. One, two, and three. All right, so here we go. This is what hopefully you are looking at right now. We got all of these 
spaces between the stitches so it looks very spread out. Yeah, that is hopefully what you're looking at right now. Let's move on to row three. So for row three, we start by chaining one. We turn our work. Great. To start row three, we are going to make one single crochet stitch in the first two stitch spaces. One, two, then chain three. One, two, three, skip two stitches, one, two, and single crochet in that third stitch space. Now this just so happens to be the very center double crochet stitch of the three double crochet stitches that we made. So either way, if you want to count your stitches and be like one, two, single crochet, one, two, single crochet, you can do that or you can just refer to the pattern and go one, two, three chains, look for that center double crochet stitch and single crochet in that center double crochet stitch. Same thing, it'll get you in the same spot, okay? One, two, three, skip two stitches, one, two, single crochet in the next. When you get to the very end of row three, after you skip two stitches, single crochet in the next stitch, you're going to make one more single crochet stitch in that top turning chain so one, two, three. So there's two single crochet stitches right next to each other to begin the row and to end the row for symmetry. Two and two. That is how row three will look. Okay, let's move on to row four. Row four, we will chain one. We will turn our work. Great, we are flying, guys. Okay, for row four, we will make one single crochet stitch in the first stitch space. So one single crochet, and then we chain three. One, two, three. Find the chain three from the row below and single crochet around that chain three. Single crochet. And that's the repeat pattern, guys. Chain three one, two, three, and single crochet around the next chain three. Again, one of the things where you don't even really have to count where your stitches are, you just follow the pattern. One, two, three, single crochet around the next chain three. Chain three, one, two, three, and you will end row four by making one single crochet stitch in the very last stitch space. Boom, just like that. So this is what we are looking at at the end of row four. Perfect, row five. For row five, we are going to start by chaining four. One, two, three, four turn our work. Now that chain four counts as our first double crochet plus chain one. We will make one double crochet stitch in this chain three section. Oops, need to yarn over first. Double crochet. And this will technically count as my first V stitch. Find the next chain three section and make a V stitch in that chain three section. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Find the next chain three section, right there. V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that's the repeat pattern across row five. Next chain three, you will end with a V stitch in a chain three section. It'll feel weird like, no, I need to like close it somehow. It's not in the pattern, okay? So literally you will end row five by making that V stitch in the last chain three section and then stop. 
that's it. We will even out the rows by working the other rows. The V-stitch row just seems to be the one oddball row that is like slanted <laughs> on the sides, but every other row should have straightness on the sides. Guys, that's it. That is the repeat pattern. So what we will do next is repeat, I think, what do I have here? We're repeating row two through row five. So row two is the three double crochet stitches in each chain one space. So to repeat row two, I will chain three. One, two, three, turn my work. That chain three does count as my first double crochet stitch. And then I will make two more double crochet stitches in that first chain one space. One, two, and then go about making three double crochet stitches in the chain one spaces all the way across. One, two, three. Now what is beautiful about this pattern? Now, like I said before in the beginning, once you get the pattern down, it's really easy to just refer to the row below to know what you're supposed to be doing in your current row. If I see in the row below that I just made my V stitches, then I know that right now I need to be making the three double crochet stitches in the chain one space between my V stitch. When I get to the next row, I'll see all of these groups of three double crochet stitches and I know, okay, this is the row that I need to make two single crochet stitches and then start my chain three single crochet in the middle double crochet stitch chain three, single crochet in the middle, double crochet stitch. And then after that row, I will look and I'll be like, oh, I see that this row, the row below has all these chain three sections. I know in this row, I need to do one single crochet and then chain three and single crochet in the chain three section. So it may take a second for you to work up your first two repeats, like work row one through five, and be like, okay, so here is the basic, this is the foundation, and then work up row six through 11, which is your first repeat, and then be like, oh, I see how it's repeating. And then you can go back in your pattern and literally visually see, oh, this is how it goes, okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I got it. And also, you don't have to count your stitches to know how that you're staying on track with how many stitches are in each row, which is awesome because just by accomplishing all of these V stitches where they're supposed to go, all of these three double crochet stitches where they're supposed to go, and all of these chain threes and single crochets where they're supposed to go, it just hits. So it's awesome. Super awesome stitch, I love it. So I mentioned in the beginning of the video also that I've been looking for this pattern for a long time, but it looked different. When I found this pattern, I didn't know what I found. I was just like, that's a cool stitch, I'm gonna play with it. But once I played with it, I was like, this is the one I've been looking for. And this is why. Let me know in the comment section if you've ever seen this stitch before. Where it looks like flowers. <laughs> it literally looks like if you manipulate the colors and you color control the project that the V stitches look like the stem with the leaves. And then the three double crochet sections are the petals of the flower, the top of the flower. And then the two sections of the chain threes are like the dirt foundation between the rows of flowers, almost like you're looking at a rose garden. And I've seen this pattern before. I didn't know how to do it. And I've been looking for this pattern for a long time because I was like, that's so pretty. And you could change the colors of the flowers. You could literally have like a garden blanket where each row of flower petals was a different color flower, or you could make them all yellow or all white. You could even change the shade of the green or change the brown to like, you could obviously play with colors however you want to play with colors but this also helps you greatly to identify what you what row 
pattern you're supposed to be doing because once you create the green stem you're like okay next i have to make the flower so you make the flower and you're like okay next i obviously have to make the dirt it's a dirt stem flower dirt stem flower and it becomes a different pattern and becomes even easier for you to just remember in your brain and the colors here that i'm using for this example they're all Karen Simply Soft yarn, size 4 weight, worsted medium, Erin 10, 12 ply, 8 WPI sized yarn here is what I used. The colors that I used for this example, the green is a dark sage, the dark sage color, the red is just red, and the brown is chocolate brown if you want these colors. But I think that honestly you just sticking with the size yarn, the size 4 weight yarn, you can find whatever color that you want to make your details. <laughs> and I thought that was beautiful. And I'm like, yes. And I also did not weave in the ends of this project because I wanted to show you how I changed colors. I changed colors at the end of each color section. I wanted the V stitches, the stem. So I started the foundation row with green. Next row is the V stitches. Those are the stems. So I wanted to keep that green. And then I cut the yarn. I cut it off. Then I reattached the red color or the color I wanted for the flower petals by slip stitching into the chain one section. Then chaining three, like starting the row, how we start the row with the turning chain and then just going. After this row, I cut my yarn, leaving a tail so that way it could be a clean color change. And I reattached the brown, slip stitching into the very first stitch space, chaining one, for my turning chain and going like the regular instructions. Now I knew that the two rows of chain threes were going to be my dirt rows. So I just made rows one or yeah, one, two, row three and row four brown. And then I cut my yarn and reattached green. Cut the yarn after that one row, attached red. Cut the yarn after that one row, attached brown. And that's how I did it. This is the cleanest way for me to color change because now it is going to be a lot of ends, but it's going to be a very clean color change, like I said. There's other ways you could obviously color change in the row by bringing the colors up with you. I don't care for that method. I don't prefer that method. I prefer this method, but if you prefer the other method, it's easier for you. You like that method better, then feel free to do whatever you like. But Again, I was super excited to find this, and I hope that this pattern here inspires you even more than just seeing this pattern with it all one solid color. Because now you kind of like have an image, like a picture that you can manipulate. Or if you don't want this, you just like that lacy V look, you could keep it all one color as well. All right, that's it guys. That's how you do the lacy V crochet stitch. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the flower formations, how you might actually tackle this pattern. Will you want to keep it all one solid color or will you want to try to play with the different colors and making them look like flowers? Let me know. I would love to hear what you plan on doing. <laughs> and as always, I do encourage you to give the stitch a try just to see if you like it, if it's one that you are in, that inspires you to create something, because that is always a lot of fun. The stitch card, you don't need that, is already created for you and ready to go on my website. So all you have to do is go to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, to print that out. Remember, these are free. You're welcome to print out as many of these as you want. I print mine out on cardstock. Again, it's the Lacy V Crochet Stitch. Make your swatch, staple it to the card, and then you have a reference forever of what it looks like, what it felt like when you made it. And you can even write little notes in saying, this was so much fun, or this is what I would like to do with this stitch in the future, or I didn't like this one, we're gonna just not do this one. <laughs> Which is fair, that's totally fair. All right, if you like this video, do all the things guys. Like, subscribe, check out my membership program. If you had fun with the stitch, I have so many more for you to check out. Check out this playlist I have right here for you. It's more of my stitch videos. Let's just keep going. Have some more fun playing with crochet stitches, crocheting together. I hope you have a beautiful day, guys, and I will see you with my next video. Bye.